Hello boys and girls, Lord Hawkeye here again. This is going to be a quick response to Nightmare 060's video in its exhausting entirety. Yes, I actually had a moment of weakness and watched it. I have no idea why. But anyways, let's take a look let's take a look at the charges here. I am charged with being a dishonest libertarian. Ooh. What does the prosecution say? Let's see. First, I'm accused of wanting deregulation as in no regulation. Actually, that's not true. I will get into I'll get into the details of that in a second. When um when I in his res his response to my pointing out that um saying um Healthcare is free at the point of use is in fact weasel words because taxes are taken out of pocket, therefore, yeah. He said this is ignorance of how taxes work. What, so they're not, ta so taxes are not taken out of pocket? So, tell me that, I mean, I really don't know where you're going, where you're going on with this, that, um, ta that you're not effectively paying for, paying for your health care through um, the socialized services. It's taken out of your paycheck and later used to and later used to um, fund health care. Even at its be even if we ignore all the skimming and all the other shenanigans, this is still you paying for health care. I really don't know where you're getting this. And um, oh, well, he he tried to counter once by saying that if he's 16 and doesn't pay taxes. Well, yeah, yay for you. But um, that what about everybody else? Anyways, let's go. It comes because seriously, taxes come for your paycheck. So if you're trying to argue they don't come from you, then pray tell where do they come from? Because I really don't know where you're going on with this. You, you keep telling me to look it up. Say no, you made you made the term. Define it. Thank you. Anyways, when his response to the challenge of him, can you prove that costs went down after they put it in? They said, oh, the costs are higher due to technology. Not true. You're looking at proof of that right in front of your face at this very moment. Like, your computer you're looking at right now, is it cheaper or more expensive than the computers we used a couple decades ago? What about the food you eat? Is it cheaper or more expensive than it was when we had to grow food using a scythe? What about the clothes you're wearing? Are they cheaper or more expensive when we, were, when we were, had to sew our clothes by hand? Simple. It's pretty simple. I mean, like, for take the farming example, while the tractor, yes, is a higher upfront cost, in the long run it reduces cost because it gets the work done faster and allows you to do more. It's the exact same thing with healthcare. While um, the, the better machines that can detect cancer earlier have a higher upfront cost, if you detect cancer earlier, it's much easier to treat and thus it saves money in the long run. Saving money and helping people go hand in hand. They are not mutually exclusive as you seem to believe. You can ask any economist this, he'll tell you. Next, he accused me of only going for the economical route and ignoring the ethical thing. Not true. I have made, re I have made repeated vids going into the ethical arguments. I have pointed out the ethical in inconsistency about socialized health care. You have refused to respond to it. In a nutshell, if stealing from, the, if stealing from people to fund health care is good, then the government is immoral because it will aggress against you if you try to do this yourself. So, you're effectively arguing that the government works on different rules than everybody else, and that just opens up a whole new can of questions. But ultimately, um, moral principles have to be consistent, otherwise they're not principles. It's just saying, oh, that's, immor that's moral just because, that's immoral just because, and that's really, not very w that's really not a good way of going about it. Anyways, he then accuses me of poisoning the well when I, um, ta when I talked about the Nightmare 6 on Nightmare 06 is PM. Not so, not so. You see, poisoning the well is if I were to say something to discredit you as a source before quoting you. I did nothing of the sort. Yes, I embellished your PM somewhat, but I did not make you a, but I did not um, say anything that would lower you in the estimation of the listener. So make sure you actually know what that means before you use it. But on to the meat of it. My dishonesty. He, this is, this is something really strange. He rightly points out that I said that I did not watch the video and says I'm dishonest, therefore, for posting it. Um, no, if I were to claim that I watched the video when in fact I did not, that would be dishonesty, but I did nothing of the sort. I said up front I did not watch it and said that I was only looking at one particular quote. So, actually, I was completely, I was completely honest and upfront in my video. And speaking of dishonesty, we're going to catch you in a little bit here, so you might want to get ready. Your friend's argument that any quack could pretend to be a doctor in a free market, also not so. If you want to see proof of this, go look at contractors. 
any, any worthy contractor in a free market will provide references because if you don't, no one's going to trust that you're, a worthwhile, that you're a worthwhile contractor, that you know what you're doing. Like, uh, and it would be the exact same story with doctors. Would you, would you sit down to a doctor who did not provide any sort of credentials showing that um, like from, pay, from patients or where he got his education or anything like that? No, of course you would demand that. If you, would, if you wouldn't, well then obviously you're not really that concerned about the matter, now are you? And besides, if you want to talk, if you think the government prevents quack medicine, go look up homeopathy and you'll see how much of that is still on the shelves. Yeah, the government doesn't even stop the obvious crook, so don't give me that. And now, here's, here's where things get really ridiculous. When I brought up the issue of um, corporatism, he says, and I says, I am not making this up, if, a pol if um, companies bribe the politicians, it's not their fault for taking the bribe. Excuse me? Uh, what kind of nonsense is that? If, so, if, um, if a government's job is to be, impar is to be impartial and, and, they, and then they turn around and take a bribe, that's their fault. All they had to do was say no and they didn't. So that's completely their, that is completely their fault. I mean, I don't, know, I don't know what kind of logic you're getting with that. Like if you, if at your job, if you took, if you took bribes and did something unethical, you think your boss is going to say, oh, well, it's the customer's fault for bribing you? No, he's going to fire you. That's what any reasonable person would do. So this is just once again special pleading for the government, something you claim you did not do in this video. So there's one lie right there. Anyways, moving on. Now onto the issue of libertarians want no regulation. Not true. I don't know if I ever did, but I have not. I have never gone after private regulating firms, such as, um, for example, Underwriters Laboratories. I have actually praised them greatly. I, I greatly appreciate the work they do. Why do I praise the, Why do I praise their regulations and not the government's? Because theirs are voluntary. Me, which makes them all the difference in the world. Because if a government passes a, a bad law or a stupid regulation or any kind of any kind of any kind of act that um, hurts people that hurts the people it's supposed to help, the government gets away with it. Nothing bad happens to them because the government is a monopoly. Now, on the other hand, underwriters' laboratories they have a they have a huge reputation that they've maintained for over a hundred years, which makes them one of the least corrupt organizations in the world. I mean. You can't you can't bribe them. There's no way they're going to take that risk. They're going to take that risk with all, with this huge reputation they have at stake, and that's why and that's why they um, they um, have um, checked out various products all over the world. I mean, you can see it yourself. Look under your mouse right now. You can see the Underwriter Laboratory sign right there. There it is, living proof, staring you in the face that regulation is perfectly possible to do without a government monopoly on it. I don't oppose regulation. I only oppose government having a monopoly on it. That's a very big difference, and it needs to be acknowledged. Next, he says, would you advocate, would you advocate um, going for profits when lives are at stake? Yes. And you know why? Because the more, pro the more profit that a healthcare firm makes, the more it can expand, and the more people it can reach out to. Contrary to what you believe, the people who run businesses do not just take all the money and then go off and live in a gold-plated house. That's not how it works. Most of it, in fact, gets reinvested into expanding and reaching out to more people. If anything, you should want companies to make profit. That means that, because profit, in a vol at least in a voluntary situation, is a measure of how much you are serving the needs of others. This is very simple. You have, in fact, you said this yourself. You said this yourself when you talked about how you're a counselor. Yes, you work for profit, but you work to help people. The two things go hand in hand because if you didn't help people, people wouldn't trust you. Wouldn't trust your advice, and thus you would not not only not help people, you wouldn't make profit. The two things go hand in hand in a voluntary situation like that. So, if you want proof of my claims, you're living it right now. I, do, I really don't know how much more definite I can get than that. Next, I'm accused of ad hominem attacks when I said when I said something when I said something nasty to your friend or to you. I forget who it was. Um, no, an ad hominem would be if I were to say something about you and say that alone makes your point wrong. I said nothing of the sort. And considering that you threw up plenty of insults yourself in this video, you might want to just put that rock down and so before you break the glass house you're in. 
Anyways, the issue of politicians and profit, you merely say, you merely assert that politicians aren't in it for the money and don't provide any evidence for this, so this is nothing more than a bald assertion. And as I pointed out before, politicians routinely vote themselves raises regardless of how well they're actually doing or how much people actually, how much people actually approve of their actions, so this claim really is on very shaky grounds. I really don't know where you're getting that from. So... Oh, and speaking of which, and speaking of which, if you want to talk about if you want to talk about dishon want to talk about dishonesty, try this. You have said to me that taxes are good, taxes are moral, and anyone who opposes anyone who opposes taxes is bad and immoral and doesn't want to help others and all this and all this sort of thing. In a PM, you let slip something that was very that was very telling to me. What that was was that you are 16 and don't pay taxes. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not sure if that's true. I don't know how taxes work in um, Britain, but even if, the, but whether or not that's true doesn't matter. What this says to me is that you yourself wouldn't pay taxes if you weren't being forced to, and, and if what you say is true, then at the moment you're not being forced to pay taxes, and thus you're not paying them. You know, I have I have said many many times, you don't that people say lots of things. It's what people do where you can really get the truth out of them. The fact that you yourself don't pay taxes if there's not if you're not being forced to, really says a lot. Really says a lot to me about how you actually feel about them. I'll let the re I'll leave the rest of that to the listeners. So that's my uh, quick response. I don't know how quick it actually was, but. I hope that clears everything up. So, well, so for all your talk about ad hominems and straw mans, your entire video was a straw man because I at no point have ever called for de for, for complete deregulation. Never. I have only called for the end of um, institutionalized violence. That is what the government is. And um, yeah, that's it. I just want an end to institutionalized violence. I don't want an end to laws or rules or anything like that. But if we have rules, they need to be mutually agreed upon. Not one group making all the rules and nobody and nobody else gets to say anything. Because, you know, that last I checked, that's called tyranny and it's not very nice. Anyways, that's my take for the day. Until next time, be ready, uh, yeah, sorry, be aware and be wise. Where did that come from?